Hey everyone, so this week I want you guys to create a double exposure. Now I know that many of you have probably done this type of tutorial before, but this time I want you to go a little deeper. I want you to create a double exposure with meaning. Let me explain. Okay, so I started off with a couple examples here. So if you just take a look, we'll come back to these in just a minute. Now let's talk about double exposures uh, in general. So this was a technique that was originally done with film cameras. And what you would do is you would take a photo and then rewind the film and then take a photo on top of the photo that you just took. Um, now there are some digital cameras that have this type of setting and it can be really, really fun to just go out and experiment and just, you know, try to, it takes a little bit of, um, you, uh, a pre-visualization basically visualizing what you just photographed and then thinking what will look good on top of that and then finding that photo so if your camera happens to have that capability um, search online to see if your camera does I would definitely recommend that you do this it could be really fun and a great way to stimulate your creativity um, now here's the thing that you can really um, imbue a double exposure with a lot of meaning by being very, very conscious of the two photos and how they relate to each other. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to, um, you know, we'll take a look at this for just a moment, but I would definitely say come back and really read through this article. Um, this is some really touching work. It makes me almost cry. <laughs> when I see it but this has to do with um, this artist in this project um, around survivors of uh, a Native American survivors who had survived through um, these schooling situations that happened during the 1900s where Native American children indigenous children would be taken from their families and put into these um, state-run schools and this was done in both the United States and Canada in order to, for them to be re-educated um, uh, we're still learning about all this stuff but so they did this project where they overlaid pictures of these schools with portraits of these survivors to kind of talk about the trauma that um, that they survived through and kind of start a healing process. So like I said, come back to this article after you've watched this video and um, read through it and really look through these images. There's really some spectacular and um, touching stuff going on here and Daniela really you know there's a whole interview here about why she did this and what it's about so come back and check it out okay now let's go back over here for a moment let's talk about the requirements real quick um you must use your own photos and so you will need a photo of a person preferably on a blank background because it'll be a little bit easier to um, isolate them from the background uh, and you do need to have at least one photo of an object, a landscape, a, a cityscape. Um, you know, I could go on and on, but it does need to have something that connects to your subject. So let me go back up here to these sub to these other photos that I showed you, and let's talk a little bit about what these are communicating. Um, so you know, this is this was one of the ones from that project. We know about this. Now, what about this one here? You know, we have this woman. Um, and I don't really know anything about this particular artwork. This is just my own reading of it. But we have this woman and she is has her eyes closed or maybe is looking down. There's um, this blue halo going basically into her mind it looks like. Blue can usually be thought of as being calming. Sometimes it could be depressing. Um, I would, for me, this feels like a little bit more of a calming type of blue. Um, I, it doesn't feel like a grayish blue where it feels more depressing and dark. It feels a little bit more vibrant. Um, then we have this path going in here with this person walking in. So for me, this is kind of communicating um, maybe a sense of calmness, of maybe um, being on a path or a journey um, into wellness, into health, into maybe mental health. Um, or getting to know oneself 
better. Um, this image over here is just so fun and bright, you know, so it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be it's about trauma, uh, <laughs> but you know, a lot of the most powerful artwork is healing artwork. So, but anyway, so this image here is just super fun and bright. We have this person who has been, um, you know, the, someone, the artist used this like smoke type of um, image to create this and they're like part of the smoke um, we have these beautiful vibrant purples and yellows yellow is a super super happy color purple usually means you know maybe some creativity is going on so you can see the how well the color choice is working with the actual expression of the person um, you know, we have some stuff that's a little bit deeper feeling, right? Still waters run deep here. Green is super calming and goes great with this meditation type of pose. Um, you know, so you can you get for, get what you want from it. This one is really fun. We have a Chicago skyline going both ways. So um, this doesn't have to be just an overlay. So this is probably closest to like an original film style. You could definitely you know, do something that's a little bit more um, creative, you know, put your own twist on it. This class, you know, I have these tutorials for you guys, but you definitely um, can put your own twist on it as long as it's still at the skill level that I'm asking you with the original tutorial. Okay. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions about what I mean by that, shoot me an email so we can discuss. Um, okay. So when you're done with this project, um, oh, well, first of all, so here is some instructions. Um, so you can click there to access the tutorial and the tutorial does say to convert to black and white. You don't have to do that. Uh, please, if you are moved by color, if you love using color to express yourself, do so. Um, and when you're done, I do want a JPEG file and you can leave that as the original resolution that you're working in. That's fine with me. Um, a screenshot with both the history and layer panels open. Uh, you can go ahead and put that on the assignment page. Once you've turned that in, I want you to leave me a comment with what you are trying to communicate with this image so I can give you some feedback on whether it was successful or maybe if it feels like it's communicating something else. I know that uh, this type of, this could be very subjective. Um, so, you know, if, if on any of these projects, if you think that, you know, your intention wasn't really, <clears throat> uh, I didn't quite understand your intention and you can basically argue your point with me, um, we might be able to, I might be able to regrade for you basically. So, um, yeah. That's just the thing when it's coming to doing creative work. If you can really verbalize what you're trying to do and make a case for it, then you'll go a lot long, uh, a lot further of a way with it. Uh, and then you will be posting your JPEG in next week's discussion board. Um, if it posts really big or takes a long time to upload, then you can go ahead and resize it to a smaller resolution uh, specifically for the discussion board. All right, guys, I can't wait to see what you create.